Hi John, hey Jaguars, this is Miss Schooler again. And this week uh, we're going to be reading another Pourquoi story. Remember we were looking at um, literature genres and we were moving into the folklore genre, which were um, stories that had been told a long time ago and then finally written down. And so, and they're really, really old. We don't know who first made them up. And that's what makes it a folk tale. But we were looking at a certain kind of folk tale, which was the pourquoi stories. Remember that French word pourquoi, which means why and because. And then last week we read um, how the birds changed their feathers, which was a folk tale from South America. This one is called How Chipmunk Got His Stripes. And this is told by several different Native American groups who live on the east coast of the United States. Not where we live on the west coast, but on the opposite side on the east coast. This retelling is by Joseph Bruchak and uh, James Bruchak. And then the pictures are by Jose Aruego and um, his wife Ariane Dewey. Oh, and we want to thank, got to remember to thank the publisher, um, Puffin Books. Thank you for allowing us to read this on our YouTube. Oh my gosh, look at that big bear. One autumn day long ago, Bear was out walking. As he walked, he began to brag. I am Bear. I am the biggest of all the animals. Yes, I am. I am bear. I am the strongest of all the animals. Yes, I am. I am bear. I am the loudest of all the animals. Yes, I am. I am bear. I am bear. I can do anything. Yes, I can. Well, as soon as Bear said those words, a little voice spoke up from the ground. Can you really do anything? Bear looked down. He saw a little brown squirrel standing on his hind legs. Can you really do anything? Brown squirrel asked again. Bear stood up very tall. I am bear. I can do anything. Yes, I can. Can you tell the sun not to rise tomorrow morning? Brown Squirrel asked. I have never tried that before, but I'm bear. I can do that. Yes, I can. Bear turned west to face the sun. It was the time when the sun always goes down. Bear stood up to his full height and spoke in a loud voice. Sun, do not come up tomorrow. At his words, the sun began to disappear behind the hills. You see, Bear said, sun is afraid of me. He's running away. But will sun come up tomorrow? Brown Squirrel asked. No, Bear answered. The sun will not come up. Then Bear turned to face east, the direction from where the sun always used to come up. He sat down. The little brown squirrel sat down beside him. All that night they did not sleep. All that night, Bear kept saying these words. The sun will not come up. Hmm. The sun will not come up. Hmm. But as the night went on, Little Brown Squirrel began to say something too. He said these words. The sun is going to rise. Ooh, ooh. The sun is going to rise. Ooh, ooh. All through the night, 
night they sat there, one by one, other animals gathered around them. Red uh, fox and wolf, deer and moose, rabbit and porcupine, hawk and owl, otter and beaver, frog and turtle, and even the little mice came. They wanted to see who would be right, bear or brown squirrel. This is what the other animals heard. The sun will not come up. Hmm. The sun is going to rise. Ooh. The sun will not come up. Hmm. The sun is going to rise. Ooh. Finally, it was just before dawn, the time when the sun always used to come up. Look, said Turtle, a little bit of red is starting to show. Yes, said Owl, I believe that the sun will rise today. Bear only chanted louder, the sun will not come up. Hmm. But right next to him, little brown squirrel piped up, the sun is going to rise. Ooh. And the sun came up. The birds sang their welcoming songs. The bright light of the new day spread over the land. Everyone was happy except for one animal. That animal was Bear. He sat there with his head down and a grumpy look on his face. The happiest animal of all was Little Brown Squirrel. The sun came up, he chirped. The sun came up, the sun came up, the sun came up. Brown Squirrel was so happy he forgot what his wise old grandmother had told him when he was very young. Brown Squirrel, his grandmother had said, it is good to be right about something, but when someone else is wrong, it is not a good idea to tease him. Now Little Brown Squirrel began to tease Bear. Bear is foolish, the sun came up. Bear is silly, the sun came up. Bear is stupid, the sun. Whomp! Bear's big paw came down on Little Brown Squirrel, pinning him to the ground. Bear leaned over and opened his huge mouth. Yes, Bear growled, the sun did come up. Yes, I do look foolish. But you will not live to see another sunrise. You will not ever tease anyone else again because I, Bear, am going to eat you. Brown Bear thought fast. You're right, tease me, he said. I was wrong to tease you. I would like to say I'm very sorry before you eat me. But you're pressing down on me so hard. I cannot say anything. I cannot say anything at all. I cannot even breathe. If you would lift up your paw just a little bit, then I could take a deep breath and apologize before you eat me. Well, that is a good idea, Bear said. I would like to hear you apologize before I eat you. So, Bear lifted up his paw. But instead of apologizing, Brown Squirrel ran. He ran as fast as he could toward the pile of stones where he had his home. He had a tunnel under those stones and a nice warm burrow deep underground. Little Brown Squirrel's grandmother stood there in the door waiting for him. Hurry, Brown Squirrel, she called. Hurry, hurry. Little brown squirrel dove down for the door to his home, but Bear was faster than he looked. He grabbed for little brown squirrel with his big paw. Bear's long, sharp claws scratched brown squirrel's back from the top of his head to the tip of his tail. But brown squirrel got away. Deep down in his burrow, where Bear couldn't get him, Brown Squirrel curled up next to his grandmother and slept all winter, while those scratches on his back healed. And when spring came again, 
Little brown squirrel came out of his hole and looked at himself. There were long pale stripes all the way down his back where Bear had scratched him. He was brown squirrel no longer. He was now Chipmunk, the striped one. That is how Chipmunk got his stripes. And ever since then, Chipmunk has been the first animal to get up every morning. And as the sun rises, he scoots to the top of the tallest tree to sing his song. The sun came up, the sun came up, the sun came up, the sun came up. And ever since then, Bear has been the last animal to get up. He doesn't like to hear Chipmunk's song. It reminds him, as it reminds us all, that no one, not even Bear, can do everything. And that is how the Chipmunk got his stripes. Retold by Joseph Bruchak and James Bruchak, pictures by Jose Aruego, and Ariana Dewey. So that is another a poor cloth story told by the Native Americans on the East Coast of the United States. I'm going to also be including a link for next week or this week of another um, poor cloth story that you can go to and on YouTube. It isn't me telling the story, it's somebody else. And um, what it would be really fun to do I think is if you try to write your own. You don't have to be an ant. It doesn't have to be about an animal. It could be why the stars are up in the sky. In fact, that's what um, the other Pourquoi story is that you'll be, if you click on the link, you'll be reading about that one. But it could be anything. Why the trees have green leaves, why the mountains are tall, why the sun is up in the sky. Any of anything. Or you could do an animal one but it would be really neat if you tried to write your own Pourquoi story. And that's Miss Schooler signing off for today. Bye.